Welcome back to Drop the Box. Today we're going to be dissecting this old blower motor to see if we can find out what was wrong with it and more importantly, see if we can fix it. So a couple of weeks ago, I had a van in with no um, blowers. It was diagnosed as a faulty blower motor. So it's like a brand new one on and sent it on its way. Um, so I thought it'd be a little bit interesting if we could, you know, take this motor apart, find out what was wrong with it and to see if we can repair it. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to test the resistance of this motor from the two power connectors below. So you've got positive and negative. So set your multimeter to ohms. And then you just simply put the probes onto the positive and negative pins of the motor and see what sort of resistance we got. So that's 1.1 mega ohms. So that's, that's basically an open circuit. What we're going to do next is we're going to give the motor power to see if we can get any movement at all. So, first we need to connect a little testing rig to the motor. And then we're going to connect our power supply. So, turn it on. Right, so we got 12 volts of power there. Right, it's, it's just not taking any. It's taking a little bit of amps. It's basically it's not taking any amps because this little power rig senses it's an open circuit. So we'll do, we'll try and spin it by hand to see if that makes any difference. No, nothing at all. To get a bit of a closer look of what's going on with this motor, we're going to strip it down. So first we're going to take off the outer casing so we can get the components inside. It's a bit mucky in there. Oh, let's have a look. So that there, the part that rotates, that should be the same colour as the wire there. So that should be a copper wire. And it's, it's just black. So I'd imagine that is part of the problem. So what we're going to do next, we're going to try and take this brush carrier off the motor so we can inspect the rotor on the brushes. So it looks like they're held on, but these, these lugs are bent over onto the plastic. It looks like that's what's holding in place. So there's one there, one there, and then around the other side then, there's two there as well. So what we're going to do, we're going to bend these over and see if we can lift the brush carrier off. Now that I've bent, these securing legs over a little bit and then see if we can take the housing off. So a little bit of persuasion. Inside, turn around, a little bit there. Try not to break it so we can put it back together and test it. In. There we are. Right, I can I can already see a problem straight away. You see it? 
So that's one of the brushes, which is free to move. And the other one, that's over that side, is stuck in. So that will definitely cause a problem. If I turn it around, see if I can free it up. No, so that that's seized in place there. So that'll be one of our problems. And the next problem I can see is this commutator is absolutely filthy. So the commutator is that ring there. That should be a nice copper colour, but it's old, worn, and it's covered in carbon. So what we're going to do is we'll give that a bit of a clean and see how it can see how it turns out. And we will try and free that brush up and just give everything a little bit of a clean really. So first we'll clean up the rotor. So give it a bit bit of a spray with some electrical cleaner. And then get a bit of Henry cloth, or Brillo pad, and slowly clean the surface. There we are, look. So that's the colour it should be. A nice copper colour. And that's why it originally was like dark, dull colour. So, bar a few little bits, that's looking like new, that's what colour it needs to be. Right, so that's the first problem. Second problem, we got to try and free up that sticky brush. So, same again, a bit of electrical cleaner first, just to clean, clean everything up. The brush pushed out. So what we're gonna do now is give it another another spray. And just work it back and forth. Doesn't take much. You can see it's coming out on its own. So before we reassemble the motor, I thought I'd go through a little bit of theory, ba basic theory, on how the, uh, the motor is constructed and how it actually works. So the first component is the brushes and the brush carrier which is this little piece here and if you remember that was the one where we had the seized brush it was stuck in and it wasn't coming back out the next part is the rotor and the rotor looks like that and the last main main bit of a motor is the stator this is the stationary magnet that goes around the rotor. So this is how the motor is assembled. We'll have the stator and we place the rotor into the stator. Like so. 
and then the brush brushes and carriers will just go over it like that so that the brushes are touching the commutator which is the copper bit that we cleaned up earlier so this leads me on to how does it actually work so when the brushes and the brushes carrier connected to the rotor and we're giving power supply to the brushes from either end um, we have then actually created an electromagnet um, so as, as you can see on the rotor there's coils of copper wire going all the way through it so when the brush the brushes are connected to the rotor and we're giving it um, a power supply we've basically created an electromagnet here but that on its own doesn't really do anything however this uh, takes me on to the stator so the stator has got two fixed magnets in there and so if you can see them there's one on that side and there's one on that side so one would be north and one would be south so now combined where we, there we are, get her in. Um, when combined, we've got an electromagnet that's sitting inside a fixed magnet. So this is a very badly drawn diagram of what the rotor looks like inside the stator. So as you, as you can see, you've got the stator with its fixed magnets, a north and a south. And when the rotor is energized by giving it, giving it power, that will also create um, two poles, which will be north and south. And as you can see by this diagram, the rotor's north pole will want to repel away from the stator's north pole, and it will be attracted to the south pole of the stator. And the same with the south pole of the rotor, will want to repel from the south pole of the stator and be attracted to the north pole of the stator. So because of this, it's going to move in this direction. And that's how the motor basically works. And so, you know, it's a very basic explanation to how a motor works, but you know, having a little bit of understanding of what you're repairing goes a long way. It's, it's a pretty simple design. There's not a lot of components to it. Um, and there's not really a lot of things that can go wrong. The only things that do go wrong are what we have found when we strip the motor down. And that's a problem with the brushes and the commutator. So the reason why this was a problem was... So that's the commutator there. So when we had our multimeter, we were just testing from this point to this point. So we were testing the electri electrical flow through this brush, through the commutator, through the second brush and back down to the negative. Now, because the commutator was so dirty, full of old carbon, dust, grime, all the rest of it, and one of the brushes was partly seized in place, there wasn't um, a nice clean pathway for the electricity to go through. It was as if you've put a little bit of paper or something between the brush and the commutator, which has given us the re really high resistance, which was basically an open circuit. But of course, once we clean that up, that hasn't really worked. Yeah, so once we, once we clean that up, um, we then had a nice low resistance going from the positive to the negative. So now, in theory, when we put this motor all back together, that motor should turn. There's, no, there's nothing there to say that it wouldn't turn because we found two potential problems with the seize brush and the dirty commutator. So what we're going to do now is reassemble the motor. So we take the stator and the rotor and push them inside each other, it's very hard because they're quite strong magnets. There we are. So it comes out the other side, like so. I'm going to put the fan section on the back of the shaft. 
And now we're going to take the brush carrier and the brushes and put them over the end of the shaft and then simply maneuver them so they go over the commutator. Just before we give it any power, we'll uh, see if the resistance has changed. So before it was, what was it? One point something meg ohms. It was extremely high. So, that's all around here. Now we've got 2.5 ohms. Well, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7. So that is completely different. We'll connect our little testing rig back up. Like so. Hold the motor while I turn it on. As you can see there, that is now definitely working now. So, you know, it's something as so simple as that, don't get me wrong. The brushes were worn and, you know, they need to be replaced. But it just shows you what sort of, you know, what, what world we're living in now. It's just, a, it's just a throwaway culture. You know, everything can be repaired as long as you've got the patience and a little bit of knowledge to take it apart. And um, just see what's wrong. But, unfortunately... In a modern society, that isn't cost effective to do. I think a new one of these was I don't know, 60 pound. You know, to sit, take this apart, have a look at it, clean it up and all that. Probably looking at hours labor in a garage. So, you know, it's is definitely not worthwhile doing. So in the end, there wasn't a lot wrong with that motor, but again, it's nice to take things apart sometimes, understand how they work, and you know, if you're lucky, you might be able to fix them as well. Um, so I ho hope you enjoyed the video. Give us a like and subscribe, and I'll see you again.